Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's time to experience the O's on the original sports podcast. Fellas, you caught me a mid-drink having some Dubby, one of our sponsors. Shout out to them. I, I like this stuff. It comes in a little canister, and I uh, just put a scoop in with like, 12 ounces of water, and they, I bought a shaker. It was like, I don't know. What the flavor you got there? Uh, it's like a, a uh, uh, fruit punch flavor. Okay, okay. Yeah, but I, I like it. Like I'm still, no... I'm still munching on my uh, dubbies in the gummies form. From, <laughs> from Bucky's in South Carolina, y'all. You got to stop by the Bucks and get some of the gummies. Chops, what do you like? You like the Bucky Nuts or something like that? The Beaver Nuggets. However, until I'm, nuggets. I'm, I'm taking a firm stance, until they start paying us, I give no. I'm not letting. I know. Actually, putting it okay. after the Buckies. I Sorry. know. Not the, from here on out. Oh, like this is what you get. Right? Is what you get. This is what you get. <laughs> right. off until so they start drinking, paying the original sports podcast. If we're having a beer, if we're having a, a glass of bourbon, it's just. You get the red solo cup yeah, going back it. in the day. <laughs> that's it. That's it. It's so always long, long before the debate over Caitlin Clark and Miss Angel Reese were a thing. Many great female athletes matriculated hmm. through college, Olympics, uh, the WNBA ranks. Our guest today has been a Bible part of the University of Maryland women's basketball program, an Olympic medalist, and took her talents to the top level in the WNBA. Uh, Miss Vicky Bullet was not done yet, though. Uh, she parlayed her basketball talents and charisma into developing her own program, helping youth as well as teaching in the high school. I don't know. She should have talked to me before she did that. Um, <laughs> and that's where she discovered her passion for helping young people as well. Uh, let's let's bring Vicky in. I'm so excited to speak with her. She is such a personality. Hi, Miss Vicky. Hello, everyone. Hey, Vicky. How you doing, Ms. Bullet? How you doing? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Now, well, quick question, because I see you're still repping at USA stuff. Yeah. Like, all I got is Pittsburgh gear. Is that all you got is USA stuff? <laughs> a little bit of everything. I'm a Boston nice. Celtics. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. That hurts me to my heart. That hurts <laughs> me to my heart. Did she say Celtics? Yes. <laughs> no, we're Dr. J guys. No. Pittsburgh. Oh. Oh, so I, I, thought, I thought we had was Philly. I'm going. I had to. Who who was your guy on the on the Celtics growing up? Well, back then when I followed Larry Bird, that whole group, Dennis Johnson, the coach, Kevin McHale, and Parrish, because I was a post player, so I kind of wanted to mimic them. So they were my watch those post moves that they had. I love Robert Parrish. He yeah. always came across so serious, but he was I know, the chief a <laughs> basketball player. He was probably my favorite on that group, but I, I will be honest with you. I was a Lakers fan and I still am a Lakers fan. Mm -hmm. It's tough. It's tough. It, it I, is. I, I'm sledding. I, no don't, there. I don't dislike LeBron, but <laughs> I, I'm not like big time into him. Okay. I'm, ready for, I'm ready for the next wave of young bucks to come through in, in the NBA. Mm -hmm. just, like it's, just like it's happening in the WNBA. Yes. But we're yes, getting way ahead of ourselves here. You know, we're getting yeah. Ms. Vicky, talk a little bit about your early years and how recruiting actually went for you. Well, wasn't as fortunate as the kids had today. We didn't have, you know, AAU basketball. Kind of mm -hmm. leaned on my oldest brother, Don, who actually played at a Division II, came home, coached my high school team. And, you know, Vicky, go to Morgantown. You got to get some exposure. So did that, had an opportunity to play on a travel team that I had to, you know, practice, but you know, five hours in the car to get back and forth. So got some exposure because we got to the championship and a lot of letters start coming in the mail. So I had opportunity to get, you know, looks of Tennessee, University of Maryland and things like that. Having six brothers kind of really helped because, you know, it was it was all about them and I was just in the midst of things. So hats off to my brother who really paid that way for me to get some exposure coming from Martinsburg, West Virginia. All right. Now, okay. I hope we, I'm going to, going to follow, but I, I do have a two part question, but first and foremost. Okay. okay. So you end up at Maryland. Mm -hmm. How did 
University, how, how'd you get to Maryland? How'd they let you out of the state of West Virginia? How, <laughs> how, how'd that coach keep his job, her job? How'd that, how'd that even happen? I know. Well, that's what, you know what's funny? People say that you're from West Virginia. How did you not go to West Virginia Mountaineers? To be honest with you, Maryland was only an hour and 15 minutes from my house versus Morgantown at the time. They had to cut the big hole through the mountain. And it was just, you know, not going there, but having the opportunity to go to Maryland. And as soon as I got home from that championship in Clovis, New Mexico, you know, Maryland started calling. Tennessee started calling. So it boiled down to those two schools. I knew I was going to Maryland because it was too, it was so much closer to home. And so being such a homebody, I said, Mom, I'm I'm not leaving. I'm just, I mean, Maryland was the place. And plus, you know, they they were really good with telling me what I can do as far as education. You know, it's about basketball, but, you know, I really had to put my foot down about getting a degree more than anything because basketball – it came natural, but trying to be in a student athlete wasn't as easy. People think it's difficult. I mean, think they think it's easy, but it's not. It's very difficult, especially playing at a Division One. So Maryland was the place. Wow. Okay. It might be a little easier now, though, to be quite honest with you, because they they put so much in front of you. You really just need to show up these places. You just got to be a time manager now. That's true. It's, you it know? wasn't. You know. Yeah. I've had several boys from our high school that. That have gone on to play uh, one playing at, at Maryland right now, uh, mm -hmm. Game Grather playing football there, and it, 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 it's all laid out for him. Yeah, show that's up where true. you need to. That is so true. Did you ask your two parter chops? Or did you just get yeah, that one? was one part about. Yeah. Well, no, second part. Well, there's so much I don't want to. I could. I have so many questions. I but I'm gonna let I'm gonna let T Sizzle go because okay. I don't even want to <laughs> go ahead, T. So fast forward, you're you come from West Virginia, you're in Maryland, you go overseas. What was that? What was that like? Because we got a lot of the fanfare behind the, the draft now and the WNBA draft. What was it like for you coming into the WNBA? How, how did that transpire, evolve? What, what, what emotions were evoked from that experience? Well, the fact that I think prior to the WNBA in 97, see, I had played overseas for seven years. So as soon as I graduated, that was the next thing. That was, you know, that's all we had. I wasn't really, my dad would say, I wasn't really have, ready to have a real job. So let's keep playing <laughs> basketball. And by that time, you know, there's a lot of other players prior to that were overseas. Vicky, try Italy. You know, you can make that transition a little easier. But I didn't hear about any, because, you know, professional league, we had a couple scouts that came to Italy. And they were telling us about this big thing. I said, well, whatever you got, and it's at home, let me be a part of it. So then, you know, the transition was easy because the fact that we were already playing at a high level with a lot of other foreign players on the team, and then we were in good shape. That's what the longevity is. It's the fact that you never stop. From college, I went over, and, you know, you get a short period of time through eight months of the season. So that was it – was, it, was, it was great. I came right back into the league and probably – with Andrea Stent was with the ones that were just leading the team because we were in such good shape. But it wasn't, I've never approached anything that's that's difficult because I always worked so hard prior to it. So the transition is just being at home and you know making that adjustment. The hardest part was just going overseas and not having social media, not having the, you know, the internet at the time. So yeah, I, I embrace, I embrace every opportunity there is to be embraced. You had those calling cards you were still using. Back yeah, then. we were writing letters still. <laughs> <laughs> the collect call. Would you yeah. please accept the collect call from Italy? Yeah, we had. I'll never say no. Mom was like, nah. We're Mom good. said, okay, a few minutes, just a few minutes. You doing okay? <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Where at Italy did you play? Like, well, I, I played mostly in the South, in Naples, Bari, uh, Toronto, not much up north, but when you got into the FIBA Cup, you know, you pretty much go outside of the other countries. But in the beginning, that's where, you know, South was always the best. It was a little warmer, but it was fun. We got to travel throughout the entire Italy. But that's what, you know, the area of the sport that I played it was mostly in the South of Italy. Have you been back since you left? Well, I've got more friends, I think, there than I do here. You know, playing oh, wow. for years. But, yeah, I've been back several times. But since the pandemic, I hadn't had a opportunity to go and plus teaching and then working in the summer is kind of hard to visit yeah but thanks to facebook you keep in touch with the your italian family as well hey who took you under your wing when you uh, you're a young lady you get to italy or you get to the WNBA? who 
who was instrumental in your early years and, and like helped you develop um, not only as a basketball player, but as a person? Well, I, th that question comes up a lot. And you know what? I have been, you know, with, with my family, we just had strong ties. My oldest brother, Don, is probably the one that, that you know, just gave me steps, gave me advice. Vicky, do this. Vicky, do that. Because I admired what he did. I watched his work ethic, my dad's work ethic. And, you know, I admired all athletes. And people always ask that same question. You know, who was the toughest player that you had to play against? I mean, mentally, I say myself because I know I worked hard. But competitively, every player that stepped on the court was always tough for me. You know, I don't care who you were. You were an athlete. You can do so much. I, I respected every player that I had to defend. And yeah, I was determined. But, you know, you have so many, you know, Cheryl Miller was a player that we heard about mm. that she wasn't on TV enough for us to follow, but we heard about her. And then, you know, you get overwhelmed when you actually get to meet these people. But I, I follow the footsteps through, you know, a lot of individuals because you can't do it by yourself. There's always someone. And I was like a sponge. Whatever you had to offer that's positive, that's going to help my my stride, I'm going to take advantage of it. So, you know, there's so many people in that bucket. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I just heard you say whenever you got on the court, it was challenging no matter what. Mm -hmm. I offered to post you up, and you said you squashed me. I squashed you. you oh, squashed yeah, me? yeah. See, yeah. yeah. I'm we, met, of it. we met at the Potomac Ridge Brewery, what, two weeks ago, a week and a yeah. half? Week ago. You said, get, get out here, little guy. I was like, all right, fine. Yeah. You still so have that game. She still got game, guys. Don't worry. She's yeah. she'll, bring it, she'll bring it tough. <laughs> no. and, and, and it's funny because Barbara asked who helped mold you or whatever have you. I am our my family from where we're from. We're family, we're friends with the Stringer family. So growing up, I knew Vivian Stringer, whatever have yeah. you, not here. So I'd so heard your name before. So mm -hmm. I was I knew of you and uh, some other players, whatever have you. However, I saw in your game a little Kareem, and I say that because you had a nice sky hook. You had an, you had an. I mean, it was pretty. I'm not, and you, you know, you, but you also about fourteen to sixteen feet out on the post. You could do work too. You had a nice little jumper as well. Because what, what, what was your height when you're at when you go to Maryland? Are you? Yeah, what, I was six. six well, one? they list you at six three. They always give you a couple more inches. <laughs> okay, so on that aspect. Was it your brothers and playing against your brothers that helped you with your game, whether it was posting up, whether it was your skyhook? Where where did you learn that? Yeah, from Don. Donnie Bullet oh. was his name. And he was he was a guard like post. And he would teach me the run and hook. I, said, I had a brother that played, he was six eight, but he was just facing the basket. But Don okay. said, you gotta have a lot of counter moves. You know, you're gonna come across someone who's taller. What are you gonna do? So he implemented that in my game. Think he got it. I mean, he was such a gem because he could do a lot of things for his size. So I didn't. he didn't want me to be that player that just played behind with my back behind the basket. And, you know, when you learn that when you go overseas. I never took a three-point shot at Maryland. But as soon as I stepped out of Maryland, you got to develop other aspects. Aspect, so you're yeah. difficult to defend. So how do you defend her? You know, how do you defend, you know, post players who can shoot the three? You get up on them, they go by you. So that versatility came first from Don, and then you learn to be versatile when you go overseas because they want you to play one through five, so they want to take advantage of you. Yeah. So, yeah, I love the hook shot. They don't teach it anymore, but I still use mine. <laughs> now, okay, exactly. So when you're, when you're coming up and, you, and you're coming, you're, of course, in high school and whatever have you, and you're going and playing where Don will take you. Do you feel now, looking back, were you getting better – when you're traveling playing with those girls or when you were playing and Dawn's teaching you playing against your brothers, playing against boys, where were you, do you believe your game was truly getting better and you were seeing your handle better, your shot better, yeah, your when defense? I got overseas, yeah. When I would, when my first, you know, 10, I guess, I don't know, six years overseas because just the versatility of the game, they never, if you, if you don't have four or five fouls, you play the whole 40 minutes. And you you train to play 40 minutes when I was overseas. You never come out unless, you know, there's a minute left before the halftime. And, you know, and this is overseas where you're playing or you're practicing almost two times a day. And then you wow. play 40 minutes. So I think the versatility of that aspect of the game was probably introduced 
on my part overseas. You know, I'm going to learn how to shoot the three. Why not? You know, mm-hmm. and of course, the inside game was just, you know, always taught by my brother, Don, and then, you know, being at Maryland. And, you know, those Olympic teams. I mean, Coach Stringer coached me in 1990. So she was one of those U.S. select teams. So I had her as a coach. So I, you know, the expectations, you know, she was always teaching yourself, not just physically, mental, mentally, how to play. Yep. Yeah. That's interesting because that's that's what you hear now is about our European players coming into NBA and, and WNBA and how well rounded and versatile yes. and just dominant yep. compared to the American player. Mm-hmm. We had Jermaine Jones on the show and we talked about the NBA today and why guys like uh, you know Jokic and and those guys uh, Doncic mm-hmm. all those guys are are at the top of the game. And yes, LeBron scores a lot of points. And yes, Jalen Brown plays, you know, a solid D scores points. But why are those guys like further ahead? And Jermaine said, you know, they play defense. They know how to play as a team. That's, That's how you're taught in Europe. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, and that and it's true. I mean, having the opportunity to to practice twice a day, I don't think a lot of kids would do. And I got used to it. I got used to even off the season. You know, you do your weight training, your skill training in the morning, and then later in the evening, I find a pickup game. And this was like, you know, throughout the week. So you get used to that routine. The body gets you. I mean, I'm fortunate enough that I probably had one severe injury in my whole entire career. That You know, I tore my ACL mm. and my meniscus the first year in New Zealand. It may be from fatigue, who knows. But the whole time I was in uh, the WNBA, I've, I've never missed a game in six years. And I was a starter for six years and, you know, not have an injury. I never set out because I had an injury. You just learn to take care of your body and, you know, the longevity that you have. So, and, and in college, I never had an injury. So, yeah, I, I maybe have good genes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you, you also, unlike today's athlete, you fought through things that today's athletes take two weeks off to yeah, just collect a paycheck sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, they they do. Again, just you have so many things I could ask. Just the, the however, real quick, is you talked about Miss Miss Stringer, you know, mm-hmm. coach being your team. Now you played overseas, all right? Mm-hmm. Then you still hadn't hit the WNBA yet. I don't believe whatever what, what no. happened. But what was what are your moments? What WNBA overseas in the Olympics? Can you tell us, was there a difference in the way the games were played? Because we hear there's a difference in international play compared to American ball. Or how did you guys prepare and do it for the Olympics? You were at Olympics twice, I believe, or two times. Yes, Olympian. 88, okay. What, what were the difference in those in those games? You know, well, did you on the way they played? Well, I just think, I mean, each individual has a gift, you know, and in the gift – that what what's your desire? I was always a defensive player, always played defense. I, I I love defense. I love stopping players. I love, you know, playing against the players that scored 20 points and I limited 10. You know, I was like, can I guard her? My brother Don told me, Vicky, to make this team, 88 Olympic team, I was one of the youngest players. He said, just play defense. He goes, Vicky, stop their best players. Coaches don't take you out because you don't play defense. They take you out because you're letting them score. So play defense. And I remember to still today that Coach Yao, who was the 88 Olympic coach, and she told me, she said, Vicky, I know you play offense because I have to play against you against the ACC. She said, if you want to make this team, you better shoot the ball because I already know you can play defense. So it just, you know, okay, well, I better do both so I can make this team. But I just think even with Coach Stringer as the coach, it's, it's just everything was based on defense. And, you know, they say, you know, your defense likes your offense. But I, I never – I didn't have that mentality. It's just like I played because I was passionate about, you know, stopping other people. You know, I wanted the coach to tell me, hey, listen, I need you to slow this kid down. You know, always playing defense. But I think today there's some players who don't have to play defense because they had people like myself. You can't defend them, then I'll be there to help you, you know. I mean, yeah. without a doubt, I don't think Donna Taurasi is a great defender, you know, but she had people around her to hide her. You know, you have teams that, okay, this kid's not a good defender, but we got to hide her and you because she's a good offensive player. Mm-hmm. But see, I wanted to do – I had to do both. I needed to be effective offensively and defensively. And I, just, I think that doesn't come from the coach. It's just come from the passion of the player of what end of the game that you wanted to play. 
I didn't want to miss anything. <laughs> and, and, and you say that, and I'm a big, I am huge on that, that defense takes will. You have yeah. to have a skill, but like defense that when you're playing defense, you're getting down, you're getting grimy. So is that, was that, and that was instilled to you from oh, your yeah. brother, Don? Yes. Okay. Now, were you, were you a dominant defensive player in high school? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, and so he, oh. so, so from young, Don was like, anything get from stealing. I was, a, I'd steal the ball. I'm not a, a post player that stands. I get mad at the WNBA today because they don't teach the kids the V cut and get in front three quarter. They just yeah. have them sit behind, put your arm bar up, and then you bring help. No, I don't need your help. I'm going to deflect the passes and you get the deflects. And you got you got to be able to read. You have to be agile as a post player. I don't see that today. I don't see, you know, post players leading in steals. I used to lead in steals in, in college and even some, you know, part of the WNBA. I loved it. And, you know, then blocking shots is not because I'm tall, because I have good timing. You know, I mean. a certain player. And I was, I love that kind of part of the game that kids don't do today. Even the kids yeah. in W, you can have a good timing. But, you know, Asia Wilson, for example, you she's no, where's the pump fake before you shoot? No, they don't do that either. You know she's yeah. going to block the shot. Give her a pump fake. And, you know, but that, oh, that's, 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 that was way back in the day, game. You think it's because of the three? Yeah. Uh, uh, because of the three just becoming so dominant in the, today's game, it's just kind of ruining a lot of those little elements of of it. That's true too. Everybody wants the three ball. It's, it's only counts for three. You can get yeah. out. You know what I was thinking, Vicky, while you were talking, you don't get paid to be a defensive player in the, in the NBA and the WNBA. No. You get paid to score points. Yeah, right. and, and that's not. You got to have the will. You got to have the will, and you got to want to meet the challenge to be a defender. Yeah, and well, I, that's just the bottom line. Even yeah. in even in Major League Baseball, you could be a lousy fielder, but if you can hit mm -hmm. first five home runs, yeah, mm -hmm. they got you. It's just basketball yeah. and hockey that they really want the people who can play, you know, an entire floor of the game or an entire sheet of ice at a game. That's true. You got like you said, you got to be passionate about defense, and it's a wheel. It is a wheel. Yeah. Yeah. So you shared a lot uh, about your upbringing and, and getting into the game and your support system with your family. Um, how about whenever you are in college or in the pros, a learning experience that just sticks with you to this day from whether it be your teammates, your roommates, your coaches, what was a learning experience from college or, or being in the pros? Well, I mean, just, I mean, my outlook of things is um, when opportunities are right out there in front of you to grasp, you, you take advantage of it. You know, mm. and as an educator, I always tell my students, you know, we use the word abuse, mm. you know, as a negative connotation. If you had something I needed to learn, I'm going to abuse you to get it and, and in a manner which, you know, knowledge is power. If you have, if I want to learn something, I'm going to go to the source. You know, I'm not going to wait till later. But my teammates were that kind of, you know, support system teachers were support systems and you know just people who love the sport that were positive i try to eliminate everything about you know being you know negative i just yeah. i can't well i can't function when there's things you know negative and you know and some people will listen and you know make their opinion no with if there's a negative i, I move away but you know always trying to find friends who, who think positive all the time. I always embrace positivity. My dad was positive all the time when things didn't do well. And I just, I kind of grew up around people who were like myself and, yeah. you know, you grow stronger. So, you know, teammates, I still talk to all my teammates and we reminisce and, and it's always a good conversation. You know, as much as we got around that's negative, we always try to come back to that sense of, this is what we did in a positive environment that we created, you know, not from the outside source. We kind of created that bubble and just, you know, we're aware of the negativity, but the positivity is just, I don't know, just one of my things I always go by. So you played 88 and 92, right? 88 yes. and 92. What was the difference between the two Olympics you went to? Because you kind of were a pup in 88, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, talk about the difference. Well, just just that, being younger and not even really expecting to be on the team. I know it was a learning curve. You know, what's international basketball look like? And then actually having to play 
with a lot of players <laughs> that you read about never really playing because the WNBA wasn't there. And these young ladies were just coming in from, I guess, a daily job to play in 88. But um, yeah, uh, Teresa Weatherspoon was on that team that she was young and she had one more year. I think there was three or four players or maybe just three players who still had one more year of, of college. So Ann Donna was one of the, all oh, the biggest, I mean, I looked at her like she was gone because <laughs> she has such a wisdom that you, Vicky, you got to do this, Vicky got to do that. So Ann Donovan was one of those players that took me under my wing to say the difference, the transition was that 92, you felt a little older, felt that, you know, okay, now I know what it's like. So now it's time to pass the torch. So that's that's what 92 was. From 88 to 92, you had that experience, had the opportunity with Coach Stringer between that time and then 92. But 92 was just a little bit, uh, I tell you, that Russian team was really good. I don't, I don't think how much we could prepare. We lost because they were better. Not because we weren't prepared. They were just better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a, that's being honest. Can't keep, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's just keeping it 100. Really I get it. Now, I, as positive as you can, is like you said, you you know, you like to surround yourself with positive mm. people. So, and in today's NBA, WNBA, which I, I would, I'll admit, I followed women's college hoops mm. oh, significantly longer than I have WNBA. Mm -hmm. So, but now we've got everybody's going. It's Re Reese and Caitlin Clark. Reese and Caitlin Clark. Is there one's game that you prefer over the other? Now, this will be a two-part question. Is there one's game that you prefer over the other? I know you pay what position you play, but what, is there ones you prefer over the other? What do you mean, as in style of the way Chicago plays to Indiana or just the style of individuals? Uh, yeah, individuals. Yeah, individuals. I, I like the pace. I like the okay. vision. I like how the versatility of post players are not just playing on the low block. The versatility has spread. I mean, Asia Wilson's shooting threes, even Boston's shooting threes. Now, when Reese gets to the point where she feels comfortable making those threes, she's going to be tough. Yeah, because she's already but getting double doubles and points and rebounds. She, she's got to get to where Asia Wilson is right now because she's relentless on the, the glass because she's closer to it. She's yeah. closer to it. She's always around the rim because that's where her – offensive game resides but when she starts shooting threes see it'll take her away from those de defensive rebounds unless they don't box her out but i just love the speed how they get the rebound and go or even getting the ball out of bounds and go it's just so fluid you know just so fluid not much more of um you know time and score situations that's happening when the clock is down but you know executing plays minnesota when they had meyer moore you know, everything was flex cut, flex cut, because she was that versatility. She can play on the outside and she can beat you up on the low block. But I like that. I like the speed that Caitlin Clark and, you know, just all the teams are just pushing the needle and just a lot more. Right. Now, and, go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. Like, I was just going to say, how much do you think the media made a rift between Caitlin and Angel? Like, Because oh. I, I don't buy into it at all. I don't. I really don't. They, they made it so big. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's really bad. I'll tell you what, I I feel for Caitlin Clark, but she's handling it well because she's got so much confidence and drive. But, yeah, the social media is, is it's just like for me, for example, I don't even listen to it because even when Caitlin Clark's not playing, they still bring up her. So, you know, let me enjoy these other kids I don't know about. But, yeah, they, they really made it bigger than it actually is. Now, ha having said that, as you said, when Reese develops her three-point shot, mm -hmm. I have noticed in a few games, quite a, quite a few games in different uh, moments, when the Fever are playing Caitlin Clark's team and it comes down to the nitty-gritty mm -hmm. and they're needing defense, they're taking her out some. So, yeah. so who's, whose game do you, do you think, because you played at all levels, so I, I respect your opinion, mm -hmm. do you think it may be easier for Reese to develop a three-point shot or Clark to develop defensive skills where she's not a liability on the court? Well, I think right now she's getting better. I mean, right in the beginning, because she was told it's okay, you don't have to play defense. But now I think she's getting better with the defense. She just has to try to keep her player in front of her. And that's hard to say when you got a Rike, you got all these defenders 
all these offensive threats that are are, are are ball handlers are going to the rim, you know, but she's getting some block shots. She's long, but you know, it, it's, it's, that's just the way it's going to be with her. But if you put her in a lot of pick and rolls now, you'll see that she's working to get through them. But yeah, they, they're going to hide it. Like I said before, they're going to hide your weakness. So if she's a weak defender, they're going to pull her out and then put her in the offensive end. So I think think other teams got to take advantage of it, you know, as much as they can. But like you said, Reese is going to be a because she plays pretty good defense. I think yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. shot, yeah. it'll be better for her. Mm-hmm. I'm interested. It's going to be it's close. I'm interested to see how the the voting goes for that rookie of the year. I'm, I'm impressed with the double double. I really am. I'm I'm impressed with that double double. I think it's going to be split down the middle. To be yeah. honest with you, yeah. Is, I wouldn't is, be surprised if they, they give Co. They give Co. MVP. Or I wouldn't be surprised. Rookie year. Okay. I be hey, surprised. Vicky, we're a privileged, pleasure, honor to have you on the OSP here. But yeah. you're too, you're too pretty, and you're too, yeah. you're too smart to be sitting behind a camera. How how do you share this wealth of wisdom? What's your like? How do you get out there and just educate people about the sport of basketball today? What do you do? Well, right now, like during, you know, after school's out, I have a program it's called Bulletproof Basketball Academy. And my brother, Scotty, one of the base, he played, um, he played professional baseball for the Pirates and the Cub. And once he finished, you know, he lives in Canada and he developed that program. So his is baseball, mine's basketball. So my program is about educating kids, not just only physically, but mentally the part of the game, because physically, We've got a lot of kids who are not the selection of an AAU travel team. We've got to develop them. And I've got great parents. We Last year we had one team. Now i got three. And I, I trust the parents. Parents trust me. And I can't make it any bigger than what it is because I only have two coaches, who, and that's myself and the other guy. And I just don't trust people who are in it for the wrong reason. So that wisdom is going to all these young people who, who play for my program and it's not a uh, tryout, it's invitation only. Mm. So I go into the schools and, you know, I get feedback from, you know, how does Cindy treat her teacher? You know, so-and-so, we watch directly. And it's like those kids who need development, who are not getting it the proper way, I invite them to my program. You know, okay. you have your elite, you should do elite. I said, I'm traveling from here to school, 15 minutes. I'm not traveling all over the world when you can learn the fundamentals <laughs> right here in the, my, my house. So we we travel to the games that are in my community. We do community service and that's it. So, you know, teams want us to come places. I was like, no, we don't have those type of kids. We have kids that play a system that's developing them. We don't have any hot dogs and that's not what I want to do. I want to see these kids go from, you know, the fifth grade and they know how to use their left hand. They know how to shoot correctly. And then, you know what? Hey, there's all kinds of schools out there that kids can get. And, you know, that's why it's called student athlete. And well, I don't have those elite kids. I want to give them all I can do. Absolutely. And and through that, that's that's what my program is about. Well, actually, you know? that's, that's extremely respectful. And that goes to what Chops' question was, invest in your backyard. And yes. And and that is to be commended. Thank you for doing yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, amazing, I love amazing work. You're doing awesome stuff. Always oh, said too. You know, you need so many more resources when you're traveling all over the country, and it costs people so much more money. When really, it's 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 not worth it. You know what? If you're a great athlete and you develop all the technique, the fundamentals, the skills you need, you work really hard at it. You're going to get discovered. Somebody's yeah. going to see you, whether it's in high school or in some youth league you're playing in. Like that's the bottom line. And then you go out and earn the rest of it by playing at the next level, kind of like you did. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, yeah, 100%. I, I mean, yeah. and you then have I'll to be more of a stand-up person for doing that. Yeah, and, you know, I share that. People, you know, would say, well, my child's playing for, you know, this, 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 and that. I said, well, why can't you just stay right here and train with our program? She goes, well, they got to get exposure. I said, <laughs> but I graduated from here. And, you know, what exposure did I have in my senior year? I said, I made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hate it, but you know, you get influenced by you know everybody else, and this is what they're doing. What you you know, I mean, God bless my kids. They they'll get there, even if it's a junior college or wherever they go. They're, they're going to get the best 
of what I have to offer. And, you know, it's, it, it doesn't cost much. It costs a smile and time. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm not going to name drop. I've interviewed plenty of, you know, we've had plenty of uh, professional athletes come through here. And, and so many of them say, well, I didn't start doing that until high school. A, a number one draft pick in the NFL by the name of Leon Searcy, he's the only one I'll name drop. His mother wouldn't let him play football until his junior year junior. because his grades weren't right. Yes. And when he got his grades right, he got discovered his senior year, ended mm -hmm. up being a number one draft pick uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, yeah. like it, it doesn't – to me, yeah. you grow into that. You can right. do it as an eight-year-old. You can travel all over the country. I see people do that in hockey and baseball. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Why? It's like I mean, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Nick, if you didn't play basketball – what would have been your other go-to sport that you would have maybe played college or, or possibly professional if it had a professional league? That's, I knew he was going to ask me that question. Softball. Oh, my gosh. I love softball. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. I, I started out as a catcher, and then I just started growing too fast, and, you know, tendonitis was a part of it. I said, I can't do this. I couldn't get up and down, up and down. So I moved from uh, being the back catcher to the shortstop and it was, oh, I loved it. And I played, I actually, I played baseball with my brother until they had a softball league. So I went there, but yeah, I had uh, Florida State University come and recruit me to play softball. And I told my dad, I said, dad, I, I, I got a scholarship to play softball. He goes, you're not playing no softball. I said, well, I can go there and do both. He said, not with those grades. <laughs> oh, <Nice. laughs> I said, yeah. I he said, you better just stick with the basketball because, you know, softball wasn't that big. But, yeah, he kind of just got my mind somewhere else. So basketball. Yeah, softball. I love softball. Goodness wow. gracious. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I get this from you. You know, you're very humble. You don't like to brag on yourself. But if, if we could switch that for half a moment, half a moment, <laughs> real quick. All right. You are, you're, what, 89 ACC player of the year. You are you get inducted into the Women's Hall of Fame. You're a big impact pioneer inductee in 22. Uh, you were director of the Boys and Girls Athletic Club, which I know around you were all around your age. We didn't have those sort of things coming up, you know, mm -hmm. so you're able to shape young minds and athletes the way that we didn't get. Of all those things, what are you the most proud of when you got like what are you most proud of like brag on yourself what are the of all those accomplishments what are you most proud of i get that question a lot too well this may be odd for a lot but when i graduated from the university of maryland that was one of my proudest moments okay who was difficult i didn't apply well not that i didn't apply myself it was difficult for me to apply i didn't know how to study so I knew that all of the other things with sports was easy. Graduating, getting that diploma was probably, even winning a gold medal had nothing to do with me getting and walking across that stage with a diploma and my bachelor's degree. And I say that because, you know, my parents, you know, didn't graduate from high school. They, you know, at 10th and 11th, you know, 9th, 10th grade educations and, it was, a, you know, was a determined in my home. You know, we, my parents had, didn't have the quality of education that we have. So going, getting that degree <clears throat> was probably the, the proudest moment for me because I, I had to work extra hard. I Your remember. family can share in that. You're, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the, I mean, I always say that because it's true. Um, sports came easy to me, but being a student wasn't. And I took advantage of it. And I mean, I went on to graduate and I have my master's and, you know, all that stuff. And because I had great teachers and that's why I think I, in any education, I had great teachers who saw, okay, Vicki struggles here. How can I help her get, how can I help her learn? And those teachers never let me down. They, you know, I had a question. And I was always afraid. You, When you don't have that intellectual, you know, stability, you fear failing academically. I never feared if I was going to get my shot blocked or miss a shot because I knew later, but you know, in the classroom is a little different. You know, it kind of just puts you down in a way that, okay, I'm not smart enough. How I'm going to do this, but I had great educators and that type of support. And so when I walk across that stage to get my diploma, I said, fear no more. <laughs> that's right. I know that's right. You needed me as a teacher because I don't let the kids fail. I don't. Yeah. 
No, I'll be making them work, though. I'll be making them work. Now, this is not going to be. And I'll tell them my story, you know, because every student, don't, they think that we're, it's like, hey, we have mistakes. You know, I misspell words, too. That doesn't yep. mean that I can't keep trying. So, yep. yeah, I tell the, the students my struggle as a student athlete, and they kind of relate and they say, well, you know what? Not everybody's perfect. I don't tell them I'm perfect because I'm not. So, yeah, we all have those struggles, but that education will drive, will take you everywhere. You know, it's priceless. Real. Price yeah, it's real. Uh, besides your favorite stuff, like hanging out on the OSP here, uh, going to Potomac Ridge, giving back <laughs> to your community, what else do you do in your free time? How do you spend your free time? you got to relax a little bit. Well, of course, you know, as athlete, we always work out. For the, I love to cut grass. I have a Z-turn. I like to cut grass. But I keep a journal. I've, I've kept a journal probably the majority of my life. I, I just love to write, you know, just, you know, wisdom from, you know, quotes. But, yeah, in my spare time, I'll sit down. I read. I read whatever book you can put in front of me. Um, just things like that, just small things, but I'm usually out and about visit friends, family and things like that. So I don't, I don't need much. I've traveled so much that you kind of just get complacent. You just want to be home. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, what was amazing about you when we met you, uh, out of Potomac Bridge Brewery, I watched you for a while interact with people. And I think that like, oftentimes people go up to somebody with your stature, you don't have to agree with me in terms of how, how well-rounded and what a great person you are and how many accomplishments you've had, although you probably do in the back of your head. But um, <laughs> I, I watched how you made everybody feel so comfortable and so welcome, and you had conversation with them. And it, it was just – that's why I rolled right up on you. Like I, I'm always a little bit hesitant asking somebody to be on the show sometimes – Mm -hmm. But I, I watched you, and, and you had all that whole table of all your friends and family. Was that is that what that was? All yeah. your friends and family that were there, like that was really neat to see. Yeah. I just I, I thought that was just a great thing. Um, I, I feel very thankful and blessed that we got to actually meet in person, and that, uh -huh. that you came on the show. You know, uh, before we let you go though, would you okay. mind? I, I know you said you don't do much with social media, but if you do anything with it, would you mind sharing? what your social media handles are, where they could find you if you are out there? Yeah, well, I mean, I do have a Facebook page and um, I have a Facebook page just personally. And uh, we don't have a website yet because we're trying to work on someone to show me how to do this stuff. But anyway, we, it's Bulletproof uh, Basketball Academy. And that's that, you know, you can follow me on Facebook and that's it. I don't do Instagram and all that stuff. I just, I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. But we just have a small group. I, People keep saying, Vicky, you need to market more, but the, I can't market that much because we don't have the space and we don't have the coaches because I'm really particular about who works with our kids. And, you know, I want them to have the best experience. And when you have a program that has your name on it, you want to make sure it's done the right way. Because I always tell people this too, you know, my legacy is not mine. It's, it's that of my parents. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I carry their name. And so I want to make sure – you know, it's respected in the way in which they had brought me and my brothers up. So, yeah, so that's the social media I have. Bulletproof Basketball Academy. You can find stories about, you know, the program itself and the kids. And it doesn't just happen in the summer. I follow the kids through all the, you know, their their middle school season. So I can't wait to go out there and, and see them play and see how much they've improved. Real, real quick, and did, just as we, as we let you go. All the way live, like I said, six brothers, you know, sports family, keeping it all the way live, pound for pound. Who's the best athlete in the family? I'm gonna have to say Scotty. He, he's he's some. I don't know. I can't even say. Myself. Did you figure you got recruited by the D1 in softball? No, you played D1 brother, basketball. Yeah, I have a six eight brother that played for Glenville and. He, oh, they both went to the same school. He, I don't know. We're all good. I mean, no, we played no, the Gus Macker. Have you guys ever heard of the Gus Macker? No. Yeah, well, I the Gus Macker was a three-on-three -three tournament. And my, me and my brothers, we were all in. We beat everybody. <laughs> now, so basketball. The bullet, that's what they'd say. Okay. But I, I would say Matt Scotty, who played professional baseball, was all around. He played baseball. He played football. He's track and field. Okay. So he okay. played more sports than we all did. So okay. Scotty probably was the best athletic athlete of okay. all the family. Now, yep. Was basketball the one common denominator that all you guys played? 
Now well, you yeah, played. Well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, but but my dad, he was funny. I'll tell you this little story to get off the thing. Every Christmas, he get a football, a baseball, a bat, you know, soccer balls, and he put it in the bin. And it was Christmas, and he will go and he'll take he'll. This is what you got for Christmas, so you pick which one you wanted to play with. But every year he would do that. So he never selected the sport we play, but yeah, but we it was basketball. Probably basketball and baseball was was the okay. thing that we all played. Yeah. Because if I always like to know how yeah. you rank, how the how the athlete we're speaking to, how do they rank in their own family? Yeah, uh-huh. I'm probably in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm, so we cannot appreciate we can't I can't thank you enough for spending this time with us. Yeah, it's been great Brad, talking to you. Fun. You brought Brad, so much to light and, and we wish you all the best going forward. Thank you, Mark. Thank you guys for all the Thank wonderful. You. Hopefully, hopefully people will see and be inspired. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll put it out there. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all right. Guys, be everywhere. Week. Thanks for having me. Hopefully someday we'll meet again. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Take care. Guys, take care. Have a great Thank summer. You. But you too. Bye bye. Are you appreciate it? Chops. I just got to know, how in the hell did you reserve yourself from just rolling with questions? Because I saw you. I saw the look in your eyes. I've known you since you were a little kid. Yeah. And you and talk a lot. And, and I, I love it. That's one of the things, my favorite thing about, one of my favorite things about you. But I know you just had shit. Man. Just oh, dude. Yeah, I did. And I wanted to know, honestly, man, because where she was in West Virginia, Yeah, I know she had sports was great. But, like, what was it like coming up? You know, because, like you said, there wasn't much, but there wasn't much in her area. Uh, and I knew a lot of West Virginia because I still had family in West Virginia. It was still, I don't want to say segregated, but black part in this town, white on this town. What was it like? And you come out of, uh, did she even, I want to know, did she even visit Tennessee? What was her visit like to Tennessee, you know, coming down south and whatever? So it was rough. But I honestly, it was easier with you guys because. There's a mutual respect on this platform. You know what I mean? So yeah. I could, yeah, I could very, come on, man. Anytime, I don't care who it is. We can be talking to anyone about anything. And if it's sports, you know, between the, we'll all have always have enough yeah. that we can keep going. But I was like, all right, they're going to ask questions, relax, chill, sit back. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, I, I just, you know, I'm going to reach out to her and thank her again personally. She gave yeah. me a text number. So, uh, I'm going to see about getting her brother on the show. I think it'd be a lot of fun to get Scott B. You got to get Scotty B on. Scotty yeah. B. Played yeah, he played for the Buckos. Yeah, I think he played for the Bonds. I, I was going to say, he played during the Leland era. I, I yeah, believe. yeah. 88 yeah. to 95. 55. 55. Yeah. He's 55. Yeah. Leland just got inducted. Did you see that? Now, where, where you guys met her, what was the what was the event? Or you just happened to all be? Oh, you she said at the just, brewery. It was, we went to the. I saw it on Facebook. One of my kids I coached in high school in football had shared it because he went to Shepherd and he helps coach out there. And she <clears> was <throat> going to be at uh, uh, Potomac Ridge Brewery out in uh, close to Martinsburg. And um, I, I hit Sizzle up in, in uh, New Bizer, and and I said, guys, you want to take a ride with me? I said, I want to meet this lady. I, I, I read about her. And I was like, we got to try and get her on the show. She sounds like she's an amazing person. And she didn't let us down, that's for sure. No, not at all. Dynamic personality, contagious. Exactly. Super open. Now, how did you – how far was the drive from where you were to where she was? About 40 minutes. It was only about 40 minutes. That's good stuff. Yeah, it was was worth it. It was 100% worth it. I would do that to to meet any pro athlete that I felt comfortable with. And and, and I'm – Chops, I'm not kidding, man. I watched her interact with people before I got up off the table and went and saw her I saw, for probably yeah. like a half hour. I watched her. Just watch. I got you. And, and well, I was like, oh, my you, God, this lady, like, is she friends know, with every one of these people? Yeah, you say that about going to meet uh, any pro athlete, and I probably would too. But the more we do this and we have these people on our show, to me it's more about these are people, you know. And, and yeah. they are kind of little. Some of them are playing their – their recognitions and their, you know, what their notorieties are, but in accomplishments because they're, they're giving back to their community and all the things that they do outside of the sports is more important. And, and you saw that tonight with, uh, Vicky. But, and T says, I get that, 
But you also hear a lot about a lot of these athletes and or actors who are still idiots to a lot of common people. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? So it was it was a refre- it was refreshing that how open she was and just talking and how easily the the the, the conversation went. You know what well, I mean? That's why we, that's that's why we pre-screen them. We pre-screen them over a couple pints, and so yeah. we, we got this. It's good. We got we got a system here, guys. But I don't need to reach out to guys that that are going to be assholes to us. I don't need to reach True. out to, to ladies. I don't need to reach out to anybody who's who who has some big stature that everybody reads all about them right now. No, yeah. I don't care about them. I yeah. don't. I honestly don't. You know, if, if I meet somebody who's a superstar and, and they're personable and they'd be interesting to that's come it. on the show, that's one thing. I don't need to reach out to these I'm people. I'm not going to beg yet. You know, I'm not I mean, it's just, that's not what we're about baby. on OSP. That's just not – yeah, that's not what we're about at all. So, now, uh, when we're not that's good, when we were sitting there talking, talked about her skyhook. She said, "We well, you know went to Maryland. They listed me at six three. What do you think? She's a legit six one, six two. She had to be had some height. She has some height. Okay, she's six three. She was new she eyes were six one, and she had a couple inches on it. Yeah. Okay, she easily did. She I'd easily. like to know if she's still not know much so much in a rec league, but when she's in a gym, does she grab who was she? Was she? Oh, doing, I'm sure she, she does. Through, she's Chop, still, she's She's very physically fit. You could tell by looking at her stature. Yeah. She's very physically fit still. She takes care you. of herself. Yeah, she takes care I of herself. I got you. Okay. Well, fellas, let's go ahead and wrap the show up. Chops, hit them with your social medias. You can find me on Facebook, you know, Michael Gregory Mills, the government name. Find me on the X at the Real Big Chops. And I am on the gram at Big Chop 79. So how let your boy send me something. Let me know what's going on with everything. You're on the TikTok too. We see you on the TikTok. Yeah, I'm trying to do my thing. I'm getting a little, you're yeah. trying to get better at the TikTok. You know, old man like me ain't really good with the TikTok, talk, ticking, whatever, but I'm, I'm getting better. The man. With the lady sleeping after the MMA fights. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, I don't know Since, what just happened. How are we finding you on the <laughs> social the X, media? On the X, Instagram. Uh, Facebook at one T young. Uh, our boy Rasheen is, he's been a world traveler this summer. You haven't seen him on many shows. He's had a lot of stuff going on though with his, uh, with his uncle, uh, being a Negro league hall of famer. They've done a lot of things this summer with, with the Negro league and, and merging it with, with baseball. So, uh, you know, we miss having him here. I'm sure he'd have had a boatload of questions, but you can find him on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you know, Rasheen Hill, uh, that's where he is. Hey, you connect with us on Original Sports Podcast. Uh, our website's podpage.com, Original Sports Podcast with Mark Meriday. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. And you can find us on Snapchat. All of those are OSP with MM. And we're also on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Original Sports Podcast. Um, you can watch this show on Tuesday nights from 9 to 10 on roku and um a shout out to our networks let's talk sports sideline sports esen and peak one network so we're we're really we really got a lot of networks that we have jumped on with and it's been really good for us um feel free to reach out to us at original sports podcast at gmail.com with any comments questions even suggestions for guests we welcome those uh thanks to steve medley for doing our voice intro uh, Charlie Hodgson for doing our music and don't forget to experience the O next week on the original sports podcast.